What's going on guys? I'm coming at you Steve Will Do It style with an intro to the intro. But I just wanted to quickly thank a lot of you guys for the insane amount of comments that I've had over the last couple of videos. For this video, I want you guys to comment if money was not an issue, you had unlimited money, what would your dream build be? I'm gonna pick three people to send some stickers to. I've just had a new logo made up for my brand 03 and we're gonna be bringing out some shirts and hoodies and stuff like that soon. But I've got some stickers on the way and I'm gonna pick my favorite build of all of them, a really unique build and one really wild build. Also remember to hit that like button if you like this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. We're super close to 10K. My goal is to get to 10K as soon as we can because I've got a car giveaway in mind that I wanna do. So the sooner we get there, the sooner I can give you guys the details on that. What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. We've got a pretty exciting one today. And this one, we are finishing off the brakes on the S14. So we can do burnouts. In the last video, you guys saw us get this thing tuned and I was super happy with the power that it made. We ended up making 425 horsepower on 15 PSI in the end at the hubs. Turned it up to 18 pounds and we figured out at 18 pounds, my 38 mil gate is actually too small because it started to boost creep to about 1920 and we were making about 460 horsepower, which it's too much for what we want. Uh, we don't actually want to be running that much. My goal was about 420 horsepower. So we dialed it back to 15 pound and we also were starting to find, we were even still getting a few boost creep issues then. So uh, what Jeff ended up doing was he took a couple of hundred RPM out of it, uh, which seemed to solve it. So now we have a mint tune. Also being an unopened motor, just over 400 horsepower is quite safe and reliable as well. So this is the Dynograph here made 425 horsepower in the end. As you can see, it is making over 50% of its torque at 3,500 RPM, and by 4,000 RPM, it's made its peak torque and it holds it flat. Power curve is super linear, as old LZ loves to call it. So yeah, no, I'm uh, pretty excited to see what this thing drives like. I haven't actually got the old dyno sheet on me to compare it with the old setup, but it'd be quite cool to find that and uh, look at them side by side. Guy from the Choice Files is actually coming down to uh, give me a hand in a sec. Uh, yeah, once we finish that off, we're actually going to tow this round to Tobin so we can do a burnout. I can do burnouts here, but it's a Monday and there's a lot of people around this area at this time working. So instead of disturbing the peace, we're just going to sort the brakes out, tow it to Tobin's and do some fat burnouts. So I'm going to make a start on doing the front. I'm going to put in the brake lines first. So I've got this one to go over the top. I actually played around with that line that goes down to the driver's side front caliper before. I pulled that off my other S14 and the way that the brake master cylinder on that car is, that actually goes into the top here. So yeah, I had to do some finessing, bend it in a couple places, but we got it to where we need it now, so that's good. Next, we can put our handbrake line in. So obviously this goes from the master up front to the hydro. Just gonna feed that through on the firewall there. Don't hate on me for my messy wiring. We gotta tidy that up at some stage. About to connect this line up to the master here. This is the old setup that I had on the last car so it already came with all the banjo bolts and stuff that I need. A while ago, I got myself one of these. Now off wish, it was like literally five bucks and it's a massive copper washing container. So let's grab a couple of brand new copper washers for all these banjo fittings. So that way we shouldn't have any leaks. So initially I was going to be running the brakes that I put onto the Sephiro. They were R33 GDST big brakes or R32 GDR brakes. But on the old track car I actually did run turbo S14 brakes in the front and I still have all that stuff. So I'm just going to chuck that on this instead of the R33 stuff. Calipers aren't as clean as the 33 GDST ones, but uh, I'm sure you guys just want to see some skids, and we can always clean this up later on. Okay. 
Got the driver's side all buttoned up. Got the passenger side pretty much all buttoned up too. We've got the rotor and the caliper on. All I've got to do is put this line onto there with our little clip. And then we can screw this line that goes from the master and connect it up to that. Now that all the front brakes are sorted, we're gonna move on to the rears. I picked up this GK Tech rear handbrake uh, kit line from Ash at Thrash Garage the other day. So uh, if you need one of these, definitely hit them up, it comes in handy. So I've got the kit laid out here and we have our main, main cable, which goes from our handbrake to the T-piece. Obviously this stuff is actually all conveniently labeled, super easy to use. Uh, this is the T-piece that it comes with, so that goes in the middle of the car essentially so that line goes to that bit and then it splits off into these two lines which obviously go to the calipers. It just came with a brand new banjo bolt and some washers but I already had one from the last setup. I just didn't have all of the rear lines and stuff from the last car so hence why we had to buy this kit. And this cable, we will run that through the factory handbrake slot. Uh, one of the rear caliper lines, so we'll just feed that through there. And we've got a uh, two caliper part, which obviously screws into the back of the caliper just there. Hi everybody, I'm here now. I thought I'd come hang out for a couple of hours or whatever, whatever we get up to. He's under there somewhere. Yeah, I'm doing the last of these lines connecting them up and then we can do some fat skids. Skids! I'm a fan of that. This is my first time checking this place out and I'm excited to see this thing rip because I was there the other day obviously. We were sorting out the clutch and whatever else we got up to before it went on the dyno but then I had to leave so I kind of missed hearing it and all that so hopefully today we can make some loud noises and yeah, do some skids. So we got all of the brake lines connected, calipers are on, rotors are on. Now we just put the wheels on, then we can go into a frame to Tobin's. We'll worry about bleeding the brakes and shit there. Got everything sorted that I want to get sorted here. So now I'm just going to move the 14 outside, chuck the A frame on it, so we can then take the Tobin's. It sucks. Right, everybody, we're in the uh, Tyrell Cube, so just hold tight, she's a powerhouse. We'll follow Joel to Tobin's and can't wait to see some skids. Hopefully, all goes well. in a car it's half past four or something for tra traffic is crazy oh well, joel's getting a few looks i don't know whether they're good or bad but people are very intrigued seeing a car getting a-framed that looks like a bit of a skeleton with just a motor and wheels yeah it's pretty funny just following him and looking at people's reactions and stuff some people are all about it surely 60 make a real big bang I ain't the oh go on no guards to blow off, mate. Just make a hell of a mess. Being kinders, boy, your car will get too fucking hot before they bloody blow. Quality, you see. So we made it down to Tobin's and uh, got here and realized that my dumb ass had forgotten brake fluid to sell at the lockup. Uh, Tobin has some, but we're not gonna bother pissing around bleeding the brakes now. Mucked around a bit, so just going to leave it on the A-frame and fucking send it. Not alcohol me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, she should be sweet. I've seen plenty of skids done on the back of the A-frame. It's only just gonna push a little bit. Get 
gearbox is warmed up, that's warmed up. We'll do a second gear drop. suits you. <laughs> oh, wet rubber too. Oh, a couple little dots. And that's the skid. Made a bit of a mess around here. I think I'm going to have to maybe sort of rig something up here just to keep this stuff uh, protected from tyre rubber, especially around here. It's a pretty cool feeling doing a burnout in this thing after yeah, not having a drift car for ages. Definitely gives me the motivation to get this thing done and get to the track. It was just a small burnout. Tobin didn't want me to do a huge one because it was getting on, getting close to like five o'clock. People were saying to come home and he had neighbors and stuff. So we didn't want to make too much of a racket, but yeah, big shout out to Tobin for letting me do a skid there. Big shout out to Guy for coming down and uh, giving me a little hand and uh, checking out the skid. If you guys haven't subscribed to his YouTube channel yet, I'll check the link in the description below. Lastly, I just want to say that I've actually started a Patreon. So I'll check the link for that and down below as well. Um, a few of you guys hit me up a while ago about potentially doing that to uh, help out with help out with the builds. If you guys want to support me, you can uh, yeah go and subscribe to that. What you can expect for the Patreon is I'll upload videos a day before they go up on YouTube. Um, I'll do Q and A's uh, for you guys, and I'll start posting quite a bit of uh, behind the scenes stuff. Um, if you've ever messaged me on Instagram, you know I'm pretty bad at replying. So if you guys want to talk to me and get a prompt reply, um, sometimes I end up taking a couple weeks to reply because I'm just so terrible at replying to messages. However, if you, are a, if you do sign up to Patreon and you message me, I can guarantee you a quick response. Anyway, that'll be it for this one, guys. Cheers for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.